morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that it's been an interesting time uh, recording my morning show from my room, but uh, basically this will be my last um, in-house um, <laughs> Of recording of Wake Up Missoula, so hopefully I'll be uh, doing most of my recording inside the studio uh, at the new location inside the library. So a little bit of uh, uh, news. Actually, there's actually mostly olds as uh, the city, uh, as MCAT looks to open on May 3rd along with the new uh, Missoula County Library. So you guys can check that out. It's from 9 to about noon. Mostly this is just for people to kind of walk and wander around. If they need to look at some stuff, they can. But the whole point is that they really want, uh, they're really excited to show off the new building. A great modern 21st century building to the public. Three hours, nine a.m. to 12, and it's going to be from Monday through Saturday. And just so you guys know, the general public hours are Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And then uh, sensitive groups and folks who are of a certain age can uh, enjoy, uh, oh, seniors can enjoy uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday without fear of contracting COVID. So that's kind of what's happening there. Uh, make sure you wear your mask in there. And that's kind of what's happening with the library. Let's talk about the census. Good news for you Montanans is that we're getting a second congressional seat in over in nearly 30 years. Uh, the state of Montana hasn't reached the population threshold needed for a, another U.S. congressional seat. So rather than it just being uh, Matt Rosendale, we're going to get another uh, U.S. Uh, rep uh, House of Representative. And uh, I mean, if our population pretty much stays the same, we're going to keep that uh, congressional delegate well until uh, the next census, which will be in 2030. So just so you guys know, um, other states that had gained a state uh, had gained uh, seats include Texas, Florida, Colorado, North Carolina, and Oregon. Uh, but what states are losing some folks, and that's California, Illinois, Michigan, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia will lose at least one seat each. Um, so, so I looked online and saying, what is the threshold to have a congressional seat? And 761,000 169 people per one seat, uh, if that's um, that based on the states. Um, and even in 2010, Montana did meet that criteria, but never gained a seat, if you really think about it. The U.S. Uh, toll population has also seen a major kind of uh, exodus in many of those major cities, hence you saw a couple of those states lose some people. But one of the things uh, that really kind of struck me is that uh, the U.S. population as, as a whole, just in the last year, only saw a 0.35% increase in the U.S. population. Not many people are making babies, and uh, <laughs> that's kind of what's happened in the last uh, year or so, but this was all based on the 2020 uh, U.S. Census, and they usually take some time to get there. So uh, just so you guys know, uh, the state of Montana will be holding the election for this uh, vacant open election for the U.S. congressional seat in um, November of 2022. And so we have another two years to uh, uh, build up a candidate on either side. All right, Joe Biden looks to put up to $80 billion invested into the IRS to go after uh, rich tax evaders. Uh, IRS has been funded enough to tackle other folks um, based on the money. A lot of times uh, they say that for every uh, one dollar uh, the IRS spends on making sure people pay taxes, seven dollars come back to them. So that's just something that um, Joe Biden looks is to try to crack down on people exploiting loopholes and avoiding taxes. Um, income tax has been on the rise and uh, and we've seen um, with the Reagan administration a lot of stuff you probably heard like with the deficit growing mostly based on the corporate tax cuts. Um, so far uh, from what I remember, uh, George W. Bush uh, did a, a corporate tax cut as low as 7% of corporate taxes. Uh, so with this whole new uh, infrastructure plan, they're looking to uh, also put uh, the... Um, uh, <laughs> the corporate tax back up there. And so far they've kind of uh, worked it amongst the Democrats to about 25%. And right now uh, Joe Biden is going to be courting the GOP side of the Senate. And we're gonna see how that turns out. But so far this is the uh, uh, one um, um, infrastructure plan bill that's gonna go through, which is part of reconciliation. And part of reconciliation 
the the short explanation is that that it is um, filibuster proof, and part of that will help things move forward. Not many people will be able to filibuster and make this drag out longer than it needs to go. But another big thing is the American Families Plan, and this is a new move in uh, Biden's administration to move to invest in families and their children. The American Rescue Plan, that was the very first one that Biden administration did. The Dems um, and Camilla Harris had to break the tie vote with 51 to the 50 votes for against it. Um, so th that part of the American Relief, uh, Rescue Plan was that they would provide $300, $300 for low-income families, uh, $300 per kid for low-income families for a little over a year. And we're going to see how this goes. But part of the uh, the new plan, this one right that he's working on, is uh, the Amer American Families Plan is to kind of extend it and also add to it moving forward. So there's a lot going on. There's just a lot, but also really sad news this week. Imagine you're the first crew to land on the moon, but one person had to stay behind. Michael Collins was that man. Uh, when people think of uh, who was the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. What about the second? Oh, Neil you know Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin. But everyone usually forgets about Michael Collins. Michael Collins, he died earlier this week at age 90, along with Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, made history only in a less prestigious way. He was dubbed the loneliest man in history, orbiting the moon and being cut off from his crew as he circled around the dark side of the moon. Mike Collins battled cancer and died with family peacefully. Buzz Aldrin is now the only member of the space crew still alive at 91. Come back to Earth and the world will start to open up again just to have it shut. We're talking about India, folks. India is dealing with a major uh, surplus of COVID infections. Um, they started off um, locked down. Everyone was doing good. The numbers were really low. But as soon as uh, India started to be like, okay, I think it's about time we start opening up. Uh, one of the things is that Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a rally as India recorded, uh, held a rally with more than a, a million people. Uh, and uh, the Prime Minister uh, said that he held an election rally in the West Bengal town of Asana Sol, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, and tweeted, I've never seen such huge crowds. And part of that um, recorded more than 234,000 cases of COVID just last Saturday, and with more than 360 confirmed cases of COVID, making it the single, the, uh, the largest single day uh, confirmed cases. So 360,000 people uh, infected in a day. Think about that. Of course, without getting into too much of the uh, the government, uh, basically just kind of opening Pandora's box just slightly open. Uh, we're talking a little bit more about uh, what's happening, um, because the, some of the consequences of having such a large number of people contracting COVID is that with the country that is already packed with uh, 1.366 billion people, it's hard to throw a rock in that country and not hit somebody. So far, the country is locked down again and hospitals are struggling to get aid to sick people. US officials have said vow to uh, throw support to India, uh, to the Indian nation as President Biden vows to help and US Surgeon General Vivek Murthy uh, announced a plan to share America's stock of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines with the world. Uh, hold on, my hair is getting all messed up. <laughs> uh, in Montana, uh, one of the, one of the th many things that happened is that through the bills and a lot of stuff going on here as well is that the masks. Um, we're talking more about Missoula, and a lot. Of course, I talked about this last week, and one of the big things is that the Missoula City County Health Department is looking to uh, change the wording from uh, mandatory to recommendations. So a lot of businesses have the uh, the the right to. Uh, not have to wear, not to uh, expect patrons to wear masks in their facilities. Um, a lot of businesses I've talked to are going to continue that tradition until it's uh, things get a lot better. But so far, the city county health department is confident that uh, with uh, sixty percent of people had uh, their have been first dose vaccinated. Which means, like, if you've been vaccinated at least once with the Pfizer or Moderna, you consider part of the six, the potential 60% of Missoula County that will be moving forward with this new plan, which seems like it's going pretty well because last time I checked, it was about 57% uh, as of kind of this week. So we'll, we'll kind of, it looks like everything's going to go well, but, you know, 
India is a very a big cautionary tale just in terms of like community. So yeah, there's definitely a lot going on here as well. But up next, I'm giving you the taste of the uh, Zach social distancing sessions. And like the end of an era, uh, the social distancing sessions, this is the end of the social distancing, distancing sessions as of last Saturday. And here is a punk rock karaoke night featuring the band VTO. Alec Gadbo. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's time it's it let's time. Yes, let's have some time for some pre-critic where I prejudge a movie where the whether it needs it or not. Um, and I have no uh, idea what these movies are about, but when I look at the poster and I think about it, it's like it's kinda obvious. Especially when you got Jace, Jason Statham up in here. Uh, we're talking about Wrath of Man. I thought it was Wrath of the Man, but Hey, I don't want to get go there, but the British man is back, and this time it's the same reason he was before. Um, revenge. Uh, watch as an unassuming, intense-looking Jason Statham takes on a company he once worked for have decided to take him out or whatever. Anyways, Jason Statham is an action star who likes to use MMA moves to beat back the bad people that are worse to him and worse to others. He's a good guy. He's a, he's he's a, he's a rough guy, but with a heart of gold. But he's just likable enough for people to be like, boom, kapow. Um, I'm assuming this movie will spend too much time world building and enough not enough on plot. Hence, action movies. Up next, we got a a, a sweet kind of comedy. You know, you got two people from different spectrums of comedy in this movie called Here Today. We have old comedic legend, Billy Crystal. Where has he been? I've seen a couple of his shows that he tried to come back in. It wasn't that great. Let's face it. Uh, we have also uh, Tiffany Haddish. Uh, she's continuing hitting the snooze alarm on her 15 minutes of fame as she uh, <laughs> keeps herself relevant in yet another movie. But let's ignore the real life stuff and talk about what this movie is basically about. A woman uh, basically wins a guy at an auction, despite her boyfriend. 
or ex-boyfriend and uh, meets this guy who she gets along with very well, who is a, a comedic legend, Broadway writer, and he's just trying to write the last best thing he could ever do. And she kind of helps him. They become friends, and everyone's like, Whoa, are you guys dating? He's like, no, we're just buds. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be kind of like a, I don't know, it's weird because it's like an old guy with a younger up-and-coming star, I guess. And that's what you kind of expect. So chances are this is going to be like one of those uh, shows where they kind of see their relationship blossom and develop. Uh, there's some misunderstandings. And then in the very end, they learn to work together and better themselves. And uh, through that, uh, success soon follows. The Power of Positivity. Uh, speaking of Power Positivity, who doesn't like Pokemon? It's time for Pokemon Snap. Hey, you like playing Pokemon games? How about you just sit back and not play it and just take pictures of Pokemon who are just kind of existing. Oh snap, they brought back Pokemon Snap. In this game you are stuck in a vehicle and all you do is take pictures of Pokemons. You throw a you throw crap at a Pokemon, they turn around and they and kind of see what happens, you take a picture. You most likely will probably get shot to their butts, they turn around last minute. Watch the Pokemon world through your lens, popping digital camera that kind of looks like you won this in a prize grabber machine. Anyways, this game will take you take a lot of your time, but don't worry, you won't have to go anywhere uh, for too long. And that one Pokemon that you needed to uh, take a picture of, turns out that they're at the uh, end of the stage, but you needed a certain apple to entice them to come out of their cave. So you have to do it all over again. Well, of course, uh, I, I, honestly, I, I'm definitely a fan. I hope they bring back Hey You Pikachu. So you can be as verbally abusive to this uh, cute little Pokemon, and he still loves you. Hey, you Pikachu. Uh, bring that back. Up next, we got a brand new dub and stuff featuring our Jeremy Stewart um, from, a from a 1948 movie called Call Northside 777. I wonder why it wasn't that popular. But here it is. Ah, uh, think fast. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <coughs> Don't expect to be playing that puzzle all night. You promised you'd take me out. Oh, but I'm almost done, dear. Well, you promised me at least one night you would take me out dancing. If we have time after the puzzle. Hmm. Hmm. The Liebermans are in the news again. <sighs> hmm. I just can't believe that Janet's always in the newspaper. I'm sure you'll be in the newspaper if you did anything noteworthy. Hmm. The only way I'm getting in the newspaper is if I die. I'll be sure to mention you dance in the eulogy or other James Stewart noises and things. I gotta think about this puzzle. Oh, uh, when I die, I want people to say that I like puzzles. Hmm. Ooh. Is this a puzzle uh, piece? Yeah. I think this would go a lot faster if you let me help you. Yeah. What? Oh, I guess you can help me if you really want to. This is really fun. And then we can go dancing after this? After this puzzle? Oh, if there's enough time. Now I get to think about and talk about what I'm going to wear to this dance thing. I'm going to bring some flats. Oh, this is going to be great. Oh... I like it when your voice matches what your lips do. It's great. I, uh, I struggle with it a bit, but it's, you know, puzzle. Puzzle? Oh, look, here's a puzzle piece that fits in this puzzle piece. Oh. It's okay. Well, I just, I, I just don't like getting my hopes up. Oh, remember when you wanted to go dancing, mm -hmm. but I was too busy? And then we didn't go dancing? Because I couldn't finish my puzzle piece last time? It's kind of like this. Well, we can't all be puzzle maticians, but it'll help. Hey guys, welcome back. It is time for your city council report. And we have some meetings to talk about Burlington Northern Santa Fe. That's the big uh, train company that comes rolling down uh, 
Oh, well, no, Montana Rail owns the, the, the train tracks, but Burlington Northern Santa Fe is the engine that basically covers all of northwestern Montana, uh, northwestern United States. It's a big deal. But like many other places in northwestern United States, and, and um, one of the things is like once a, a corporation or a company that leaves um, an industrial site, a lot of times they don't clean it up, and, which, and hence they call them brown sites. But this big thing is that uh, the city of Missoula is looking for uh, them to clean up, clean up the site and get it prepped and ready for potential new residents who will be living on the north side of the tracks right next to Providence Medical. So here's Heidi West, City Council, comments on this. I wanted to remind folks that the public comment period for the Northern Burlington Rail Yard um, ends on Sunday the 2nd. Um, which means if you want to mail something, you actually have to get it in the mail on the first. Um, but uh, emails are accepted through the second. So please comment in support of a uh, residential level cleanup for the site. Thank you. As things keep on growing, River Road is yet another area. I spoke about this many months ago, but they also spoke on this um, with one of the public comments uh, from a resident nearby this particular area in which they are developing. These are a lot of the properties that are desi deciding to sell. There's some old um, trailer parks there that have been there for a while, and so a lot of people are concerned that with this new construction gentrification, uh, they had designs and such that makes this look like kind of a high unit complex with nine la nice landscaping, and developers are looking for the right look for this site. So far, public comment from a resident of this area had this to say. It's like, we are having major issues with housing affordability here. And to continue this policy that has been in place my entire adult life of like not giving true voice to the neighborhoods, letting developers run wild, like this rezoning is not helping that, like just referring to the growth policy, not individually looking at it at the point of not even having the maps correct is doing a disservice uh, to our neighborhood. Um, I could not get a name from this person, but LUP will talk more about this and such. And so far, no action was taken. This is on uh, during a public hearing. Uh, so this item is up for referral and it will be talked more about in May. Um, so they have three pro proclamations. I'm not going to show you the clip of them reading the proclamations, but I'm just going to uh, say it. But so this is volunteer recognition week. So we got uh, so a lot of uh, Missoulians uh, do a lot of volunteer work. And one of the big things that just happened recently was that big cleanup off of the reserve encampment. Uh, the river are, are running a little bit higher and it's uh, definitely a, a environmental issue with a lot of the trash that gets uh, accumulated near the reserve street um, as well. So I wanted to speed through it um, and say that uh, there's also a Mary Lou uh, Cordes Day, which will honor her 40 years of service on the cemetery board for City of Missoula. And of course, you can't forget Arbor Day. So today, um, if you're watching this on Friday, Mary Lou Cordes will, uh, it'll be Mary Lou Cordes Day here in Missoula. Oh yeah, and I was talking about the uh, temporary encampment as well. Heather Harp, uh, City Council, talked about the temporary encampment that we, uh, that the they offered through the, uh, the temporary safe outdoor space. It's called TSOS, and that was part of the, par uh, the Partners Hope Rescue Missing United Way of Missoula and Heather Harp comments on the temporary encampment that they offered folks uh, a chance to comment. As difficult as it might have been during this last winter, it at least provided them some um, a, a place where they felt that they could um, get on with their lives. And as, as Stacy stated, tomorrow is an opportunity for the rest of us in our community to put ourselves in there and understand where they're coming from. So I hope you can attend that because I think it's gonna really help move the conversation in a, in a positive direction. Thanks. Tuesday is when the meeting took place. They had public comment. There are a lot of people who are concerned about this uh, encampment, but part of this is to encourage people, because uh, especially during this time where even the Pavarella Center, the homeless shelter, um, had to uh, kind of branch out and kind of try to separate as many people to help mitigate the spread of COVID. Uh, we had the use of the Johnson, uh, the old Sheck Firehouse, which is off of Johnson and uh, North Street. That was used as a spillover site for a lot of homeless folks. But also there are uh, some folks who are even more concerned about um, catching COVID. And a lot of people who are homeless don't have a tendency to have access to medical. And so what happened is that they created a temporary safe outdoor space on private land. And it was uh, 
uh, proved through uh, United Way of Missoula County and three Missoula County commissioners held a listening session to hear comments and concerns from the community about possibly um, extending the operations of the government-sanctioned homeless camp. So the main idea behind this was to relocate the folks off of Reserve Street, uh, the, the Reserve Street Bridge um, area. It's behind Walmart. It's kind of in that general area. But they wanted to uh, in, encourage people to move. Part of this is that there's a lot of people who are just like, why don't they just move? It's like, we can't force people to move. It's against their civil liberties. They are homeless, but they also are U.S. citizens and they have rights. And we can't just force them out. So part of this uh, temporary shelter was to encourage them to uh, be out, uh, but also have availability for some nice tents. It's not the best solution, but it is a solution. Uh, the mayor, John Engen, talks about the new restrictions for the Montana communities on hiring lobbyists to represent their respected towns. This is what he does say. For the amendment to this bill would prevent uh, the city of Missoula, Missoula County, all of the cities and towns in Montana and counties in Montana uh, from having representative voices at the legislature. Uh, the lead of cities and towns called a, an emergency board meeting this afternoon. Um, we'll be working on that and trying to kill that amendment uh, in hopes that we can continue to have a conversation with our uh, elected representatives when they are in session uh, and provide them information so that they can make informed choices. Uh, and the rest just goes on. Uh, and uh, I had to do a little more research on this particular item. Uh, I looked into this, and this was uh, basically a, an amendment that was tacked onto House Bill 695, was mostly geared to attack environmental groups that speak up against businesses that contribute to global warming, <coughs> coal strip, <coughs> Northwest Energy. Uh, <laughs> uh, this amendment has nothing to do with this bill, but has been added regardless. So they're asking folks to uh, contact your uh, uh, representatives and to be like, hey, this is not cool. You know, you shouldn't, like this is pretty much close to like slap lawsuits where big businesses can sue the little guy who speaks up against them and just throw them into bankruptcy just by litigation and stuff like that. So I don't want to get too much into this, but we also, since we are talking about uh, legislature, uh, let's talk a little bit more because I went to the school board and they talked a little bit more about Senate Bill 18, which requires less credits to graduate, which may or may not create a Pandora's box of um, of kids who are undercredited as they graduate high school. So, and, and the issues with this is that they don't feel as though they're getting a full education that missed out because of this pandemic. And so that was part of the one of the emergency bills to allow for more kids who have uh, disruptive education systems to move forward. And so here is MCPS Superintendent Rob Watson explaining. It's an allowance for any school district to give um, to to allow a student to graduate um, with a district diploma if they have met the minimum state requirements. So. Um, we talked about this last spring, but I'll just remind everybody, the state requirements are 20 credits um, in specific areas, um, and, the, and the district requirements are 24 credits. So our, our requirements are higher than the state requirements. This bill would allow, um, well, and in fact, it, it, it sort of compels trustees to um, provide this option for students that um, have experienced an educational disruption. So education disruption is the key word in this. And part of this is that uh, the Montana state requires about a minimum of 20 credits to graduate. And they're looking into, uh, th with this bill, uh, uh, their in Senate Bill 18, this is looking for education disruption uh, in their regular scheduled education, you know, online learning and all that stuff like that. So a lot of kids have kind of fallen behind education wise, but the seniors who are supposed to be graduating this year, this also ha helps them a little bit more moving forward and being able to graduate with a uh, lower credit, but also get, uh, be able to use, uh, the word also is uh, academic variance in which you talk to your principal and they're able to work on this to help you get graduated, I mean, get graduated early. And part of the issue with this is yes, you, uh, GEDs are the fastest way to get a high school education, but there are a lot of, uh, uh, things in place, uh, that you need to have X amount of credits just so you can actually go into college. And so the MCPS has a 
minimum credits of 24, while the state of Montana uh, minimum credits is about 20. And um, part of this overall means that five classes a year for freshmen to seniors is doing the minimum amount of credits. Most schools in Missoula have seven uh, periods, hence the seven credits uh, per year for the four years, and you can have up to 28 credits. Of course, you know, the big another buzzword from this meeting was the academic variance. All right, so that pretty much does it for all your uh, clips. But now I'm going to be doing some mostly talking about what happened in your uh, committee meetings on Wednesday. Public Works, uh, they're looking to uh, look at... Um, Actually, this is kind of a big deal because uh, Public Works is really looking to uh, figure out a new standard into uh, uh, in a neighborhood traffic management program. And part of this is to kind of use education, use uh, the ability of complaints, and work on intersections in smaller um, impacted neighborhoods and try to help mitigate uh, speed of traffic and the amount of traffic that's going to be coming through here because we are in an ever-growing city of Missoula and with every person there's a car and uh, it feels like for every person in Montana especially it's a car and a half per person. Uh, so far the biggest push for Missoula was to create a bike-friendly town and encourage less motorized vehicles. Also they are not really adding any more parking to a lot of these uh, new uh, create new structures and buildings and stuff like that so there's also that i mean i i've definitely noticed with a lot of new um buildings that are popping up in missoula that they're not really adhering too much to parking but they are also trying to encourage you know more growth inward as a result so this info it was all informational and they're not moving forward on anything and they're gathering information you can contact email ben weiss and those folks at the tpcc which is the uh, Transportation Policy Coordin Coordinating Committee, and you can look that up on the website, which I'll tell you in a bit. But yeah, put some input. If you have any problems in, in your neighborhood where you need to help mitigate speed, you, this is, these are the folks you want to talk to within the city government. Public safety and health. I mean, it kind of feels like we just talked about public safety and health, but this is a big deal because we're having an election for municipal judges. And... What does that mean to you? Just so you guys know, the city of Missoula has been appointing judges for municipal courts, and these are the kind of judges you see if you get like a ticket from a city police officer, or you know, like uh, something happens and you have to show up to uh, a small court, and this is uh, municipal court, you know, just you know, doing that kind of stuff. And part of this is that the state of Montana passed a Senate Bill 127, and during the current Montana legislature, and part of this basically requires that all communities in the state of Montana now hold elections to uh, have municipal judges. So the uh, interview process is completely gone and anybody who uh, jumps on the election can be elected as a municipal judge within a community in the state of Montana. So the city of Missoula is looking through these many challenges and they're looking and, and they are just getting started. If you want to get started with local government, see what I did there, uh, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Agendas, webcasts, and minutes, those are your references to everything you need to know about the city of Missoula. All right, so that about does it for my morning show. I did want to say that we are now uh, opening the doors for more summer camps. We are offering up to five kids, yes, only five kids, social distancing, trying to be safe, new library, regulations, all sorts of things, but we're doing uh, summer camps. We're doing two stop animation summer camps and one horror camp, and all these camps are from 1 to 5 p.m., short days, and we have a um, maximum ceiling of five kids. So we're going to be uh, contacting some parents and some old uh, camplers and campers and stuff like that, but if you are interested, you can go to the MCATS website, you uh, pull out the tab, how do I, and you can find the summer camp programs and you can sign up there as well. So we finally got approval just uh, about a week or so ago. So it's exciting to be doing another summer camp. Uh, once again, as we had to cancel our spring camp, because uh, the spring camp happened just as everyone shut 
down for COVID. So it's been well over a year since we uh, interacted uh, with any of the youths of Missoula to help encourage media and stuff like that. But if you are interested in learning more about MCAT and more, like always, you can go to MCAT.org. We are open to the public and we will offer uh, assistance and training in media equipment. Um, we're hosting an orientation on Saturday uh, that's going to be happening on May 8th. Is it 8th? Whatever. Hey, the first Saturday in May. I'll, I'll just pop it up right here so you can see what the date is. Hmm, that's the date. All right. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm done with my show. Uh, and it's pretty much going to be done. Um, <laughs> oh, man, my hair's done. And also, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much done filming inside my home. And I'll be filming more from the studio um, at MCAT. So... It's been an interesting time, and uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp.